Kindred UMC live show features adults discussing adult topics, occasionally with adult language. It may not be suitable for young viewers. Please use discretion before watching. Hello all, welcome once again to the Kindred UMC pre-recorded live show. My name is Chris Hayden. I'm the pastor at Kindred UMC. Uh, and I did it out of order. We're coming to you not live, but pre-recorded from Kindred Studio A, AKA my front room. And I'm Preston. I'm the new stand-in director of community and engagement parties of Kindred UMC. I'm Dion. They just found me down the street. I, don't, <laughs> I just got here. I don't know where I am. We're, we're pretty sure he speaks English. That's about as far as we got. Do you know how to sit? I'm here. That's it. Dion is, uh, I, think, I think the closest we can get you to any official title is Dion is the spouse of our <laughs> HR person. There you go. I'm a friend to the community. Uh, I'm for, a friend to Kendrick. Friend, friend to animals and the community. There it is. Uh, so yeah, uh, filling in for Courtney who is out of town. Um, so we are, we're actually in the middle. You don't know this because we've recorded so far ahead right now and mm. none of these have been released. Because I presume that you're every every actively I'm engaged I'm in our there. youtube channel actively please like share and subscribe <laughs> leave a comment down below even if it's a bad one i, I learned that it doesn't matter leave a bad comment that helps <laughs> youtube can't tell <laughs> um so we're in the middle of our um study on the book of leviticus the first seven chapters um so dion since you're new here uh what what is your um uh, history with the book of Leviticus? Uh, not much. I mean, I know Le Leviticus is really... Uh, Isn't it the bad one? It's very... Yeah, that, <laughs> that's like the main thing I've got out of that. Is that's the, it's the harsh one. It's uh, the bad one. Yeah. Yeah, it's the one that... Uh, the, the main thing that before, you know, before I like became a pastor and had to literally pay thousands of dollars to learn how to read the damn... or the dang book. Um... Uh, the only thing I knew about it is that, like, oh, that's what homophobic people use to hate gay people. <laughs> they use the Book of Leviticus. Um, it's more than that. I'll, I'm, I'm very excited to tell you all. It's more than that. Happy to hear that. In fact, the first seven chapters are, it, it's, it's instructions on, um, on specifically how to do sacrifices because the Book of Leviticus is an instruction manual for the Levites or the priests in because there were 12 tribes and they all kind of had jobs and levites their job was to be priests and so this is kind of an instruction manual for priests on how to conduct the the day-to-day -day ritualistic priestly kind of stuff and so the first seven chapters are sacrifices and the first three of those sacrifices and we're on chapter three this week are are all optional they they are um about thanksgiving and joy and do you find yourself grateful do you find yourself wanting to celebrate do you find yourself wanting to express um some kind of a gratitude with you know how things are going and the way god has you know been active in your life then here's some ways you can do that we studied the last couple of weeks um there's they're they're at all different economic levels and all of them are equally pleasing to god so it's not about um who's the richest and you get a special seat at the table, even the poorest of the poor can go and for free glean from the fields and bring uh, an offering of grain to God to express gratitude and, and joy and, and celebrate. Um, and everyone gets to eat of, uh, well, no, sorry, that's this one. This one, everyone gets to eat of it. Uh, and so it's like a, it's not just a sacrifice like we're wasting food, it's also like Hey everyone, let's like let's all celebrate, you know. I see. Yeah. Ba -na -na -na, da -da -na -da. Um, you get okay. Get right claims. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. This is uh, Leviticus chapter three. This is the offering of well-being, or the offering um, of the fellowship offering. Okay. So here's how it goes, and it's going to be like it's going to be instructional. It's going to sound like a cookbook. Okay. So just prepare thyself for boredom. Here we go. If the offering is a sacrifice of well-being, if you offer an animal of uh, the herd, 
whether male or female, you shall offer one without blemish before the Lord. You shall lay your hand on the head of the offering and slaughter it at the entrance of the tent of meeting. And Aaron's sons, those are the Levites, Aaron's, Aaron's the, the Levite, uh, Aaron's sons, the priests, shall dash the blood against all sides of the altar. You shall offer from the sacrifice of well-being as an offering of fire to the Lord, the fat that covers the entrails and all the fat that is around the entrails. The two kidneys with the fat uh, that is on them at the loins and the appendage of the liver, which he shall remove with the kidneys. Then Aaron's sons shall turn these into smoke on the altar with the burnt offering that is on, uh, on the wood on the fire as an offering by fire of pleasing odor to the Lord. Uh, again, this is a theme of the last two chapters, the odor. The, the, uh, the idea is that the smoke, the burnt offering, the, the, the aroma rises, and it, that's what's pleasing to God. Gotcha. Um, I, you'll, we'll hear this again, but I want to point out it's the fat uh, that is the fat and certain organs that are being offered to God. And everything else, everyone gets to eat because like, it's, it's a party time. Gotcha. Uh, if and that so that's offering of the herd. This is an offering of the flock. If your offering for a sacrifice of well-being to the Lord is from the flock, male or female, you shall offer one without blemish. If you present a sheep as your offering, you shall bring it before the Lord and lay your hand on the head. The offering it shall be slaughtered before the tent of meeting. And Aaron's sons shall dash its blood against all sides of the altar. This is the same thing. You shall present uh, its fat from the sacrifice of well-being as an offering by fire to the Lord. The whole broad tail which shall be removed close to the backbone, the fat of, uh, that covers the entrails, and all the fat that is, uh, that is around the entrails, the two kidneys with the fat that is on them and the lo- at the loins, and the appendage of the liver, which shall be removed with the kidneys. So there's a lot of, like, it's the same, it's a recipe. He's telling you how to do this. It's, a, it's an instruction manual. Yeah. Uh, then the priest shall turn these into smoke on the altar as a f- uh, food offering by fire to the Lord. If your offering is a goat, you shall bring it before the Lord and lay your hand on its head. It shall be slaughtered before the tent of meeting, and the sons of Aaron shall dash its blood against all sides of the altar. You shall present as your offering from it, uh, 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 as an offering by fire to the Lord, the fat that covers the entrails, all the fat that is around the entrails, the two kidneys with the fat that is on them at the loins, and the appendage of the liver, which shall be which shall be removed with the kidneys. Then the priest shall turn these into smoke. Altar is a food offering by fire for a pleasing odor. Same thing. Like say it's uh, these are it's and uh, again similar to the last weeks when we talked about it. Uh, herd cattle, you're rich. Um, flock sheep, less rich. Uh, you can't afford that goat. A goat will feed lots of people and and relatively inexpensive. So it's like multi-state. It's it's gotcha. like a, it, yeah. it's it's entryways into d- despite your economic level. Um, and then this final thing: uh, all fat is the Lord's. It shall be per, uh, perpetual statute throughout your generations in all your settlements. You must not eat any fat or any blood. We kind of let go of that one, didn't we? Uh, yeah. I'm a brisk, I'm a brisket man myself, and uh, that's uh, the fat's the best part. Like a steak still mooing. That's uh, yeah, that's the uh, um, that's the language of my people. That's the best part. You ever notice Southern people? They pick the worst part of anything. Yeah, like you don't eat the neck. That's the best part. <laughs> that's, that is an actual impression of my family. Um, so okay, so what do you make of? I can tell you what I think, but what, what do you make of the uh, the that last part about all fat is the Lord's? Uh, very weird and specific, but mm-hmm. I think you you and I had discussed it earlier. If you had watched, um, I think I had said something like, "Why? What's with the oil? Why does it have to be? Oil? What's with mm. oil? Oil? Oil?" Yeah. And you were like, "I think it's like got related to fat or something." Well, yeah, fat has lots of uses, right? Mm-hmm. Like I would imagine in this time period, like yeah. fat is useful in a lot of ways. So I'm, I'm guessing that there's something around giving the, a certain part. I'll, I'll tell you the so the oil because we, oil and fat both burn. They like mm-hmm. fat. If you render fat, it produces oil basically. Um, it's uh, the oil is used for anointing. Like if you have like, you know, olive oil or you know any type of oil. Uh, it would have been a lot of olive oil because it's Mediterranean. Um, that that's always used 
for as a like a it, it's a symbol i don't know exactly how it got to be this way but it, it it's what you do when you are anointing it's a symbol of the presence of god that's anointing it. with oil and that's why the last offerings that we talked about there's a lot of oil involved it also burns and a big part of this ritual is burning things hmm. um so that's one of the reasons that fat too fat burns you that's can't it. you can't really burn you can't light meat on fire but you can la- light fat on fire mm-hmm. yeah. um, the other thing too is that fat is uh, especially in a time when you know we have a kind of an abundance of food in the states like uh, but at a time when food is a little less uh, available fat is high in calories it's yep. rich it tastes the best it's it's the best part yep. and so essentially this is saying hey take the best parts and those belong to God okay like this is it's a best thing first not the other way around you know and that's why there's all that language about without blemish every like if you bring of the of the herd it shall be without blemish we don't want you to you're not getting rid of your your bee stock you're bringing something that is important one is because it's an offering to god and two it's because you're sharing it with the community like we don't want to set up a a, a, a you know kind of a, a communal covenant together where everyone just brings kind of their worst like so there, that's kind of what I want to get into. There's some. This is specifically a fellowship offering, which means that it, it's about. And it, it, the word is uh, in Hebrew. It's uh, shalomim, shalomim. And if you kind of say it enough, you can start to hear the root of it. Shalomim, shalom, shalom, shalom. This is. It's a. It's about making and perpetuating peace among the, the like the community. It's about, hey, let's all get together. It's This is, in, in a very real sense, this is barbecue. This is brisket. This is ribs. This is, let's let's smoke some meats and let's uh, have a pool party, you know? Um, Sounds good. Yeah, right? Um, and it's, again, it's really important to, to note that this is optional. This is not like a, a God that says, and every every Tuesday you have to do this. And if, the, and if you don't have a flock, you better... Get a, get a kid, we're eating something, you know, like, and that's kind of the, that's the, it's, it's an important thing because that's what I think about when I hear people, like, their experience with the idea of Leviticus. If you don't, you better. Yeah. Yeah. You better, you yeah. know, or I'm gonna, yeah. you know. Well, where does that stem from? I, well, bad, uh, bad. good question. Where do you think that stems from? I, bad parenting? Using, <laughs> using something to scare a child into submission, using something or other people into submission. I, well, so why not twist words and say, "Hey, he's doing it to us. I can do it to you." I, well, I think there's something to um, that. I, I think that is an easy way to power. Like if I, um, you know, like I tend not to wear robes anymore because just because of the setting of the church that we're in. Um, but when I used to preach at a, in Eustis at a more traditional church, often I would wear a big robe and a stole. I would be on a platform that was higher than everyone else. Um, when I deliver a sermon, nobody else is allowed to talk. Like nobody, you like, you can't, it's not a dialogue. It's I'm delivering a sermon, you know, and that, there's a lot of power in that. And if you want to control people more than you want to set them free, then it becomes much easier to say, uh, if you don't do this, then you will be condemned. Mm. Um, and so I think the message of the Old Testament in particular, because that one, that one's, we're furthest away from that and it's hardest to understand culturally because we're missing a lot of puzzle pieces. You mm-hmm. know, we have to, you have to actually have to like, learn a lot about ancient Hebrew culture before you can start to understand some of the stuff, which thankfully I, you know, I get paid to do that. I'm like, and I'm, I, I nerd out about it. I really, I love learning that stuff. Yeah. Um, but most people have like real jobs, you know, <laughs> like most people have to go to work. They can't spend 10 hours every week looking up. What, what is the word Shalom mean? mean? Where does it come from? What's its etymology? You know, um, right. So yeah, so if you if you want to control people rather than set them free, it's a lot easier to use condemnation and judgment, and I think that's what happened. But and again, that's why it's so important to point out the book of Leviticus starts for the first seven chapters, which is not a, a small amount. Like it's a pretty high percentage of the book, 
And the first seven chapters are all about like, all right, do you find yourself experiencing joy and wanting to express gratitude and wanting to celebrate with your community about what God has done? You got to remember this follows Exodus Mm -hmm. where they've literally just been set free from slavery, from the greatest world power in the world at the time, Egypt. And so they've literally been set free from slavery in a miraculous way and delivered into this promised land where there's a, an abundance. And so the first books of Leviticus are, or the first chapters are, do you find yourself grateful? Do you find yourself <laughs> wanting to throw a party? Do you find yourself wanting to celebrate with your family and your friends about what, like where you are compared to where you were? Here's how you do it. It's called barbecue, and it's the greatest thing that humans have ever invented. <laughs> um, and so, uh, I, so I want to ask you, because um, because we're not, you know, I, I'm I'm not a literalist about this stuff. You know, I, obviously, I, I eat fat all the time. I, it's the best part of the meat. That's what I do. Um, but I I want to ask you, have you ever like, how do you, what's your relationship with? like gratitude when things go right and when things are like worth celebrating like can you can you think of a time uh where that really mattered to you and like what how did you do it like what how did you mark the occasion um and i'll tell i'll share mine and then i'll invite you to share yours um when when we were getting married my wife and i um so we didn't do uh you know normally you do like a bachelorette and a bachelor party and uh, and we just we're just not really that kind of we're just not that those kind of folks and I, you know I didn't really want to go to like a strip club with a bunch of my guys or whatever um, I wouldn't know kind of, like, I, I would be like I don't know where to put my hands I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this is uncomfortable <laughs> um, and so what we opted to do instead was uh, we didn't do the night before bachelor bachelorette we instead did the night of our wedding. And so we, because we had, a, you know, her family lives in Taiwan. They, a lot, bunch of them flew in. And um, we had all, you know, a lot of our friends from Tampa, from the other side of the state that had driven in to be a part of it. And so we had our ceremony during the day. And then we rented a party bus and just took all of our wedding party and anybody who wanted to come downtown. And we went out to like bars and went dancing and, and like, got to catch up with people we don't get like that was our version of a bachelor bachelorette party it was after we were married it's like let's all go downtown and party and dance Mm. um and like that was there was something about the it it was all it, it was a lot of my favorite people all together in the same place um and we were all celebrating something that was really really meaningful and impactful like that's how we marked the occasion and I, I propose that that is an act of worship, just like this. So what, what comes to mind? What, what memories, what stories do you have? Um, this is a silly one, but pretty heartfelt. Uh, so I went to the national championship game this year with my, with my dad, who's been the biggest Georgia Bulldog fan of all time ever in the entire world. So we go, knowing full well we're going to lose this game to Alabama, who's been a powerhouse in the college football world. If you don't know, they, they, faith. they have a little faith right here where we go to the game and say, we're probably going to lose. We're just happy to be here already. And there's already the gratitude there of we're already appreciating the moment. So yeah. even if we do lose, we're already happy to be here. We'll be fine taking a flight home, taking the L, taking the loss. Um, that doesn't happen. We end up winning on a pick six, meaning an interception happens and he runs it back for a touchdown in front of one of the best coaches of all time, Nick Saban, in his face from a coach he trained on his team saying, we beat you. And I watched my father tear up. He was jumping up and down and then stopped. And I went, what's wrong? And he goes, we did it, buddy. We did it. And that, that alone <laughs> had so much. Uh, we have toiled in trouble for so long. Yeah, Dad. We, st- we, did, we it. did it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just like the, I can't believe it. And it's been so long since the 80s. That it's blah, 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 blah. But this whole like, oh, this like relaxation of gratitude and celebration is something we both went through. Being, you know, a sports fun, fun, fun fun sporty game whatever it is it's not really life life but it's still how much time and effort we put into barbecues 
food, having family over, having our hopes met and lost, all of the above to come to the culmination of 40 years later, it happened again. Yeah. Very cool. How about you, Dion? Yeah, how, do you, how do you celebrate? Yeah, um, I think the biggest thing, I think the biggest thing for me I'm thinking about is just um, my wedding with my wife because it was really you guys playing it safe it was well there was nothing <laughs> super wild to be grateful about but um i'm gonna it, tell you said that uh good, good. <laughs> you that. no but it, it's just because it obviously was a celebration for us but when we were planning the wedding it was really about like how do we get all of our friends to have like mm-hmm. a great time and so it was around like, and yes, that was like, what kind of food, open bar, like all of that stuff. But it was really centered around like us having a good time with our friends. Um, and like kind of what I noticed with like most of these stories, at least with, with gratefulness, like there's an aspect there where when you're really grateful for something or you're really excited or you feel accomplished with something, um, do, like having that experience alone doesn't really you it's know, not as good. It's not as good. It's not as good. You know, and so when things happen, when you are grateful, you want to share those things and you want to share them ideally with the people that you love and that, that you're around, right? Close friends and stuff like that. So I could see those similarities, you know, linked to kind of what you were sharing with like Leviticus because um, it's about, you know, having perspective, being grateful for what you have giving those sacrifices but it's also for the, the betterment of everybody else and you're sharing that experience with everybody um which is really uh, which i like your story a lot because that goes into like when you think about how like teams work that is that thing it's like mm-hmm. we like we're all invested in this thing and we did it and that's a different thing than like i did this thing by myself you know what i mean mm-hmm. yeah there's something about the um I mean, we're, we are, um, we're pack animals, man. Like we, we thrive in community. We, we don't tend to do as well in isolation. And, and I don't think that's an accident. I, like, I don't think that's just happenstance. Even though some of us think we might. <clears throat> don't well, yell at me. <laughs> Somebody out there. <laughs> you know who you are. Um, yeah, there, there's uh, life. It, so uh, I'm, I'm going to steal a quote from a movie, and I can't even remember what it is. But um, and, you know, it's a oh, it's it's a West Wing speech. It's a we- of course it's a West Wing speech. Um, <laughs> Been into and, it for the past and, six you weeks. You know, there, there's there's a the this there's a like a leak on the staff, and there's all this stuff drama going around, and and. And the end of it, they don't. I don't think they even really find out who the leak is. But uh, he's one of the characters makes this speech, and, and he just kind of ends it with saying, "Listen, here's all I can tell you is that um, somehow through the magic of us being together, uh, our our defeats are sweet, are like are lessened, and our victories are sweetened because we share them. They just are. And so you're you're my guys, and that's the way it is. Um, and that's." That is worship. That is holy and divine, and um, and do not discount it just because it feels good, because you believe that the Bible is supposed to make us feel bad, and because God wants us to, you know, uh, uh, be on our knees and, and grovel. That's not the case. The, the harshest book in the Bible begins with, um, "Hey, do you find yourself wanting to celebrate?" Here's how you barbecue. So, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Oh, stop groveling. You know I hate that. No.